opening to the Declaration of Independence. Uh, but we read this before when we were out uh, doing our programs outside, uh, dealing with uh, the marches and the demonstrations and what have you. So the final version of the Declaration of Independence as accepted by Congress did not contain the following paragraph written by Thomas Jefferson as part of an initial draft of the document. This is a paragraph that was left out of the Declaration of Independence. He has waged a cruel war, this is not King George, he has waged cruel war against human nature itself, violating its most sacred rights of life and liberty in the person of a distant people who never offended him, captivating and carrying them into slavery in another hemisphere, or to incur miserable death in their transportation thither, the middle passage, the people that drive. So Thomas Jefferson is aware that there's thousands of people dying in the middle passage. Talking about their, uh, to incur miserable death in their transportation thither. In other words, he already, the poor guy knew what was happening. The piratical, meaning pirate, warfare, the opprobrium of infidel powers in the warfare of the Christian king of Great Britain, determined to keep open a market where men should be bought and sold. He has prostituted his negative for suppressing every legislative attempt to prohibit or to restrain this excludable commerce. In other words, he didn't went around everything to make sure this commerce, the slave trade, continues. And that this assemblage of horrors might want no fact of distinguished die. He is now exercising these very people, or he is now exciting these very people to rise in arms amongst us. In other words, he's participating in the slave trade. They didn't bought all the slaves. And now he's exciting the slaves to rise up. If you remember the book of Negroes, that, I, that most people never heard of it. It was a real book that the British kept a register of Negroes because he told everybody, you raise up against these colonists and I'm going to set you free. And after you fought for a year, you know, and you get a little something on the side. So it was called the Book of Negro. <laughs> hey, the people don't have any idea uh, what be going on in the world, you know, and what people had in mind for them. I'll continue. Uh, people who, upon whom, uh, the people to rise in arms amongst us and to purchase that liberty of which he deprived them by murdering the people upon whom he also obtruded them, thus paying off former crimes committed against the liberties of one people with crimes which he urges them to compit, commit against the lives of another. The omission of this passage referred to awareness on the part of some congressmen that a number of New England merchants 
were profitably engaged in the slave trade. So it wasn't just Dixie. Okay. New England slave traders. New England is above New York. You know, Connecticut and all of them. Other legislators were simply in favor of slavery as an institution and felt the inclusion of such sentiments would prejudice the case for its constitution, for its continuation, that is. Many historians uh, and critics have understandably concluded that the elimination of the above pas passage offers adequate proof that the American black, unlike his white counterpart, was never meant to share in the fruits of independence and equality in the adoption of a homeland. I just wanted to mention this on the way to, you know, the Democratic Convention for the last three nights. I don't know if you've paid any attention to it. Oh, it's wonderful, I tell you. The only thing is if you believed any of that stuff. Right. Because uh, like we mentioned before, that in 2000 this was one thing, in 2004 it was another, it was hanging chads, swift boat, you know what I mean? And then it was, uh, uh, they had to wait for the Constitution to okay the 2000 uh, election. In 2008, uh, they brought in Obama, and he raised $600 million before he even started going to... Now, that's an African-American. I'm not saying that they're not or we're not able to raise money. But if he had $600 million later on to be a billion dollars to run for, uh, you know, they'd be spending money. The thing is, is to keep you in the system. You could tell from all of what they were saying, for all of what they're doing, everything is out in the open. Everything is there for you to see. The, all of the fear and apprehension, the, the, the conspiracy groups, uh, the in fact, old Brandon was just uh, uh, indicted today. John, whatever his name is, he was just in, in, indicted today. Uh, uh, the postmaster general, the post boxes being taken up, the shithole countries, all of that stuff, right, is all put in front of everybody's face so that it'll scare the people to death. And he's doing it on purpose to divide the country because the leaders want the country to be divided so we could bring everybody together and unify them like Obama was supposed to do, right? And Obama did that. He, they, they wouldn't even have to go through this. All they had to do was keep on with Obama. I mean, just bring some. They could have sold ice to Eskimos, man. With Obama, a black man as a president, of course, he had no ties. Remember, every time they bring somebody on board, they don't have no ties to the old days. No, to the biggest one they got was John Lewis, and he was in Congress. But when they, President Obama had no historical ties to the civil rights movement before. He wasn't even born, hardly. So... Uh, and Kamala Harris, born in 1964, and her mother and them was part of the civil rights, not that I'm from Oakland, which I am, I ain't never heard of them, and I haven't seen none. Her, she was the district attorney in, in uh, San Francisco. Then she was a state attorney general. That's the state law enforcement. That's the law enforcer of the state of California. 
the law enforcement, the big, the, the big sheriff. That girl is so tough. She said, like you got kids, if your kids don't go to school, she going to put you in the penitentiary. That's a tough girl. Right? But she's liberal now. I read this to let everybody know. I'm going to read a couple more things from this, right, this uh, thing. I don't need to even deal with when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people. You know, the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. That's what governments are for, to make life easy for people, right? To make it easy to pursue life, liberty, and to pursue happiness. Deriving their just powers from the consent of the government. The government is the one that they supposed to give the right to the government to govern them. That whenever this form of government becomes destructive, these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new governments, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely. Well, this is the Declaration of Independence. And if you want to uh, get rid of this government and establish a new government, the first thing you do is try to get yourself a spot, a plot at the graveyard. Because boss man going to kill you, going to put you in the penitentiary, uh, try to run you crazy at least. Now here's the dear constitution. We the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, this is the preamble, establish justice. Okay. Justice is fair play, it's equality, and this is the preamble of the constitution, 1787. Tell me the time when this country has established justice. They just celebrated yesterday the women's 100 year anniversary for the right to, to vote. But that wasn't necessarily even black women. Yeah, and Native Americans think they got the right to vote in 1934, something like that. That's just off the cuff. I'm not, uh, I'm not reading it from any document. But, uh, and even if you could vote, so what? You can't vote for anybody. You can vote for the people that they got up there right now. And, and they sound wonderful, except that's the same story that they've been peddling Decade after decade after decade. The same old line. Okay. And they got everybody involved. Now this time the tactic. Sometimes they want you to vote for change. For hope. Si, si, puede. Yes, we can. All right. But this time they're using the fear tactic. Right, yeah. Yeah, they're just using the fear tactic. They're scaring the people into voting. If you don't vote, if you don't vote, and if they say it over and over and over again. So it's obvious. It's obvious that Donald Trump is doing what he's doing. And Donald Trump is saying things, if it wasn't part of the plan, he couldn't say those things because, first of all, no other president could get away with saying anything that he says. I'm suspicious of this. If uh, if it don't if it don't come out the way I want, I may not even leave. I may stay here. You may stay there. Okay. Nobody could say that. Nobody could say that. Oh, 
I'm not trying to mess up your vote, but then yesterday he said, I am trying to do this and do that to do what you say I'm trying to do, suppress the vote. And then they come back and say, you gotta, we got to get rid of him. We got to do this and we got to do that. Hey, you know, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, like all the Republicans that's switching over Okay, I wouldn't be surprised to see George Bush, what's the name, his brother, Jeb Bush. I wouldn't be surprised to see all of them so well uh, to make sure. See, they got to make sure that, uh, and if all of them that's on the outs move against him, then that will ensure that he's gone. They want him gone. Because remember, he's, he has not, he's had three and a half years to produce his style. I'm going to, uh, my negotiating style is going to work. I'm going to bluff everybody, scare everybody. The only thing is every time he bluffed, the people called it. They shot down the drone. That was a zillion dollar drone. The biggest one they got. It wasn't no little old, like the little old helicopter drone. No, it was a drone, right? And they, the Iranians shot it down. And when they did whatever they did against uh, General Soleimani, they said, oh, nobody got hurt and all that. Then they had the hospitals full in Germany. Of the people with concussions and scared to death, right? Because I remember early on the reports were saying that they were flying sorties out there, you know, taking people out. To right. Take, you know, yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing about this, what we're t trying to make sure, to f we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice. They haven't established or even attempted to establish justice. Ensure domestic tranquility, peace in the society. Domestic tranquility for them could mean lynchings, burnings, night riders, and all of that. It has to be domestic tranquility for them. Provide for the common defense. The common defense against who? Like who are we defending ourselves against? Uh, the military industrial complex is the only people that make money from all these wars. In common defense, they've invaded Afghanistan and been stuck over there now for 18 years. Can you imagine? And they won't let them go. Okay. Iraq, they've been there since 2003. They destroyed Libya. When they destroyed Libya, that instructed destroyed that whole support uh, network for Northeast and Northwest Africa because he gave money, Gaddafi gave money to a lot of, they used to call him as a joke, the king of Africa because he uses oil money to help Chad and all them countries. And after he was taken out, Saudi Arabia took over with uh, all of their Boko Haram people, with all of that Saudi money, causing the most horrible fitness in that part of the world from Saudi Arabia. The war in Yemen is supported, of course, the US. It's okay because it's their friends from Saudi Arabia. The money that they spend on arms with the United States and Britain is no problem. Okay. So, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare. Is that a reality? Has the welfare of blacks, Latinos, immigrants, or anyone else been looked out for except the wealthy white people of America? Promote the general welfare and secure the blessings of liberty uh, to ourselves and our posterity. So has our family reaped the great benefits 
of the American system. Absolutely not. The 13th Amendment to the Constitution, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for crime wherever the party shall have been duly convicted uh, shall exist within the United States or any other place subject to their jurisdiction. In other words, slavery is abolished except for the commission or the conviction of a crime. It doesn't say a felony or a misdemeanor. That means them little petty crimes all throughout the South filling up them chain gangs. A Negro can't do too much crime because he can't get no he can't get, he can steal a couple of chickens. He, he can't do no armed robbery walking in no white folks store. Right, yeah. Rob, he can't do nothing. Yeah, no, 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 no. Nigga, what's wrong with you? Right? Okay. He can't rape nobody because they didn't consider assault on a black woman rape. You know what I mean? Or they'd have to all go to penitentiary for rape. Okay, the point is there's still slavery in the United States. Technically it exists because this 13th Amendment. Now they had a movie, I don't know if you had saw that movie about Lincoln. Yeah. I saw oh, that. he was jumping up and down, buying and selling and trying to get the 13th Amendment. And look what it says. See, the point I'm making is I saw this, I've been watching those things. And they're sales pitches. That's all they are. But today's talk is about sanctions and sabotage. Sanction means that we here at Masjid al-Islam, a Sabakun movement, have been sanctioned from day one. We were sanctioned when we got started in 1980. And we've been sabotaged all along the way. Where we are now and our existence is proof of tenacity, pertinacity, stickability, and they always had a saying, 95% of ability is stickability. The ability to stick, the ability to hold on. We have never been diverted from our direction. We have never been diverted from our goals. We have always been focused, right, on where we have been trying to go. Now, there's some characteristics that have been deployed. Okay, so we've been attacked on our property and we've been attacked by a visible enemy. It's not an invisible enemy. All of our people, everybody that's against us is visible. If we have the people of certain mas masajid, if we had people around the corner, if we have people over in Virginia, all of those people are visible. They are visible, they are there. They have visibly lied to us, they have visibly tried to mislead us. When we was out year before last, uh, collecting money at Eid, right? By the time we got two or three dollars, the guy come and he just lies. You're going to get way more, da -da -da -da, and he says it. I don't know, did you hear him say that, that you're going to get more? Yeah, I, yeah, I was too far away. Okay, but no, he said it. And, and, but you was there when he called me on the phone. Yeah, was, yeah he called me on the don't you worry about a thing. We're going to hook you up. Well, Abdul Haq and I was over in Virginia 
we were standing out in front of uh, uh, the place out there, and uh, the deputy uh, leader out there came out and said, uh, come on in, Imam Musa. Just, uh, so we go in and, uh, well, what are, what are you trying to reach? I said, well, we're trying to get 100000 for our school. So they ho hum. He said, we'll take care of that. That's what uh, Imam Majid and the guy from Bangladesh, he was from Bangladesh, he was the assistant the chief out there. But we ain't seen high to half, none of that. <laughs> so it's visible. We've had a visible enemy. When you look at the Negroes, or let's call the name of something like Manna, their Muslim alliance of North America is supposed to be a Muslim alliance of North American indigenous Muslims forming a collective, a group, a movement, or ummah to uh, put its stamp on Islam in America. It's not harm, it's not established to be against this group, against that group, but is formed to put forward a platform for indigenous Muslims in America. And all of the so-called imams and other famous personalities appeared at those meetings or part of it. And you look up and guess what? They're all against us. Why? I don't know. Well, we don't, ain't going to say that. We know, we know why. But we have a visible enemy. We have visible tactics. Visible tactics. But we also have visible resistance. Visible resistance. That means uh, we just worked on the cars yesterday, right? Okay, so the cars, both of them, automatically just stop. Boop. So, with one of them, we just put uh, liquid in there. We drive up there and we say, okay, that's it. So we can see that it wasn't like that before. And, and as much liquid was going out, it didn't happen over a period of time. It happened right away. Because when we was driving up the hill, it left a trail of liquid. Right, it left a trail of liquid, okay. Now, the other car, we pushed it from around there. Now, when that car stopped, it, was, it had, I would say, at least about a quarter tank of gas, a lot of gas. Okay, so we still don't start. Oh, I look at the needle. It's on red and below red. It's that little red dot and then the needle is. I so, said, oh, well, it just appeared to me that somebody just siphoned the gas off the other night when we was out there. That's all, it just and put it in another thing and that's it because it was when i looked at it it's way down so what we just go to the gas station put some gas in and it didn't take one second to start i think you was listening to it and you didn't know whether it started or not or could you hear it it started yeah yeah I can hear it. yeah it zoom 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 and it run like a top. I mean, it runs so nice, you can't even uh, you can't even hear the thing, or it don't. There's no vibration. You know what I mean? It just yeah, yeah, yeah it just runs. Yeah. Well, no, I remember it was. Uh, I didn't I didn't believe how simple it was. You know, I guess I was kind of I guess in a good way disappointed because I was looking. I was really looking forward, like learning how. To no, to find out how. No, 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 no. When we you got to remember. You have to remember 
that we already know what we're doing. Now, I'm going to take pictures, or, or you can take pictures when we leave with the cars. Because remember the flyer. So we're going to do a flyer, but they had already, uh, they was ready to go probably a couple of days after. But okay, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Remember, we're used to it. And you got to remember, it was exactly like we said. Oh, all you got to do is touch this or turn that and they'll be ready to go. But at first, you can just turn, you can't do, it ain't, they're not going anywhere. They're just not going anywhere. And ain't nothing you can do about it. But when they're ready for them to go, all you got to do is shake the car or do whatever and it's ready to go. That's clear. That's from like a thousand years of experience. So visible resistance. We've always had a saying, make injustice visible. What they do to us is visible. The war in Yemen is visible, right? And it's oppressive. What they did in Libya and the Gulf states that supported that war, visible. is visible for North Africa and all the rest of Africa because that's where a lot of that money was going and a lot of that support. He helped stabilize uh, Northeast and Northwest uh, Africa, especially Central and Northwest Africa. Now, Boko Haram and then Mali, they just had a coup today, you know, and, and uh, took over. They begged the French to come back. The French came in and they say, y'all got to go. Y'all are messing up. Y'all, things are nine times, is what the radio just said an hour ago. Nine times as bad as when you got here. That's what the people of Mali were saying. Okay. What happens with Iran? What happens with Iraq? What happens in Syria? Right? Now, what the Israelis can do with Palestine and the people of Palestine is up for grabs. They've taken the country and they occupy the country. All this is against the UN. And they cut off water and everything, electricity and everything they want. When they get ready, they have open air prisons. That's what Gaza and all of them are, prisons. Okay. Make injustice visible. All the injustice that we deal with here is now visible. And I'm talking about this subject because I got a call last night from uh, California. And it was about my son and the house and stuff like that. And it's not important what it was about, but it was a call probably to maybe to get me to hurry up and come out there and what have you. And uh, I want to mention something about uh, family for a minute. Did you ever see that movie uh, Panther? By but you never saw it, okay. But anyway, there's a couple of interesting scenes in there. But anyway, the COINTEL program, we have full understanding of it. And one of the greatest moves that they have made with me is family. Now, what's happening with family? To tell you the truth, family is a big blessing if you use it properly. Let me say that again. Family is a big blessing. There's an obvious blessing 
if family cooperates with the government, uh, it's going to be over a period of time. And if they get your whole family to cooperate, to them, they feel like we've made a big uh, step forward. Basically, it's insanity. Here's why it's insanity, and it's hilarious. First of all, families have an internal code that they can talk to each other. Families, they can say stuff. Like, uh, if, if I knew at a certain time when my nephew is getting on the payroll, I don't have to go to him and try to get him to, man, you, and, and his father, I know when his father is on the payroll, I know that his father is just super trying to get control of his alcoholism. And he's got the whole family upside down. I know that the reason that he's fully into alcoholism and everything else is because in 1985, 86, he was working as a guard at these prisons, federal prison, da, 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 different stuff, and he was in the army. So I know he's a candidate for government uh, persuasion. But see, I was his hero all the time. And uh, that alcohol, when he works for the government against me, and he don't think that I know he's working for the government, I'll give you a perfect example. In 1980, 89, maybe 1990, we're at the masjid. And uh, Abdul Malik is there, and my nephew is there, and we're having a meeting. And so, at that time, Abdul Malik knows, Abdul Malik knows that since he didn't got to be around, he didn't point it to everybody that he wants the government to bring into the picture. And one of the first ones was my nephew. So, we're having this little meeting, and uh, my nephew is looking at Abdul Malik, and he's mad at him in a little way. But Abdul Malik is almost making fun of him, like, uh, well, what's happening, man? What's... He know that my nephew can't say anything, because now Abdul Malik nor my nephew know that I know what their conversation is about. I know my nephew is a police. This is 100 years ago. And I know that Abdul Malik is, yeah, you can't say anything about it. So what's up, man? What, what, what are you talking about, right? Okay, now that's burning the heart of my nephew up, but I can't say nothing, or I'm not going to say anything. I'm saying something about it now. 50 years, 40 years, 35. Let's say 35 years later. But I'm watching that and I know what it means. 30, two, three years, 30 years later maybe. I know what it is. And I understand it fully. Okay? But we have to let this stuff play out. Why? We have to have a plan. We have to have a structure. We have to have an organization and we have to go through a systematic process to fulfill our goals and what our goals are at that time. So I might say to my nephew, this during the filming, uh, hey, uh, you remember Aunt Dale? Yeah, I stayed with Aunt Dale because uh, of course I know he stayed with Aunt Dale. Well, you know, Aunt Dell has uh, the bayonet of our great, 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 great grandfather, right? Well, my father called him grandpa, so he's my great grandfather. 
and his release papers, you know, from the army when he fought in the, on the Union side. He fought on the Union side. He was at Vicksburg, and he said, Aunt Dale, now my aunt, it just sound like aunt so-and-so, but she was born in 1898. My, grand, my aunt was born in 1898, you gotta remember. Okay, and she lived, well, you know, it had to be quite a while if the people that, that are only in their 40s now knew her. Wait a minute, these guys may be 50, in their 50s by time be rolling. Anyway, so that's code talk. They don't know what the, nobody that's outside of the family would have any idea. And if I'm talking in code, it's specifically to that person. Why? Because I know that the government's going to call him the next day, which they did, and tell him, and I know that he was, well, I got to get this on film because I know the government is telling him, hurry up and get this on film. Right? But as soon as we get started, he pulls up. Okay. It's not that I know that, but I do know that. I, I know that. I've been doing this all, the line, all along. There's another thing. It's not only the family code where you can discuss things, but expectations. If the government have went to everybody else, why are they not going to go to your family? <laughs> Why, that makes it even more, for them, that makes it deadly. And after they get one, they keep going. They get the ones first that they kind of know they can get. And this is for the cause. And you know your uncle or your father's this kind of guy. And now we have the whole CIA, the whole military industrial complex I, we want you to help us save his life. Well, it makes sense. This nigga has been all over the world. He does this and that, and he can fly backwards. If you don't stop him, those people are going to kill him. Right? It makes perfect sense. They do know you. They say, well, shoot, when we was kids, he did this. Later on, he pops up in South America, Europe, and he starts this masjid, and he's with Iranians, and they just see the pictures, see them with Iranians. This is the chief, you know who that is? Look where he's showing up. Look at all these newspaper articles. From there, right? He's with our main enemies. This guy, even my daughters were saying, uh, Dad, you're a communist. No, because they didn't told them that uh, they didn't told them right down there that that's what okay if I mention Chairman Mao Zedong and all that and I mention equality of peoples to them that sound communist and you got to remember those Negroes those Negroes may not believe they can see you stay underwater for 10 minutes without coming up. It don't make no difference. He's still a nigger. Right? Still a nigger. The record is four minutes. Don't make no difference. He's under that 10 minutes. It's fine. He's a nigger. And who tells niggers stuff like this? Communist. Right? So why would my children write down there today? They love their father. Why would they say, Dad, you're a communist. Where do they get that? They get that from the Negroes that they're associated with. And remember, it's easier if you have your whole, if, if my family has been turned out with the police, their family never had to be. They was already police prone, probation officers, parole officers, police. They was already, you know what I mean, governmental type. The, everybody in the family worked for the city one way or the other, the city, the state. They, that's what they did. Okay. 
So, we have visible, they don't understand or they can't see your support network. Or well, where do you get confirmation from? You know, just continue like this all. Where do you get support from? Where do you get confirmation? You know what I mean? Where, where is it coming from? Everything that you see is a confirmation. When you look at all of them Negroes, all on one side, it confirms that you're doing the right thing, right? And we could sit here flipping coins and, and I could say, well, if so-and-so don't call in two minutes, right, I'm going to slam the books. I'm just exaggerating. But within some time that day, ring, 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 ring. And it always happens, right? What I'm trying to say is, we know who we're playing with and we know what they do to try to they got to get their game together i am tired of slapping the urine out of boss man i am i'm tired i'm telling him you got to get your game you got to prove your game i'm i i have to motivate myself now i'm in an era where no this is true Remember, I talked about it some time ago, self-stimulation and simulation. Simulation, you know, like you fly a plane, a simulator. Okay, self-stimulation is where we are now. In other words, the government, if they did things to us, it stimulates your mind. You have to grow, okay? I didn't grow to the point where I have to stimulate like flying in a simulator. I have to imagine where the movement would be in 2025. In 2000, I have to put it in my mind and I have to prepare for that myself because they're not doing anything, right? They didn't reach, they, some, whatever, whatever. Maybe they don't know they didn't reach, they, they had a standstill. They can't do, they're not doing anything. Maybe they're not doing anything because they know if they do something, then it's going to cause me to evolve. So, visible tactics, our tactics, just like what I'm talking about now, those are visible. Those are visible. And having fun, uh, there's a way you can have fun with boss man. All these things are fun. Let me see if I can find. That's a simple. This is a fun one from mm, 10, 12 years, 2007. 13 years ago. How to punk the FBI. Y'all ain't nothing but a bunch of punks. That's what it says. And then you can't, the backside on the small one has a whole history of things. You know, but this is according to the Sunnah. Look what it says. Aisha radiallahu anha reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept a pulpit within the mosque of Hassan ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu that he might take his stand thereon to take pride in the Messenger of Allah or to meet opposition. In other words, there was a member in the masjid for the most famous poet of that time, Hassan ibn Thabit. She reported that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say, satirize the Quraysh, and verily it is more severe on them than the throwing of arrows. Make fun of the Quraysh. It's harder on them than shooting with arrows. It's more powerful than bullets. That's what it's saying. Comedy. Satire is more harmful psychologically because if you shoot a couple, you're going to hit a couple. But if you satirize them, if you make fun of them, you start causing psychological damage to the whole tribe. If you're good at it. In essence, Sahih Muslim, satirize the Quraysh. 
And verily it is more severe on them than the throwing of arrows. Like shooting bullets, or bombs. It's tougher on them. That's in Sahih Muslim. She also reported, I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say to Hassan, Verily the Holy Spirit, that is the angel Jibril, will not cease to help you so long as you meet opposition for the sake of Allah and his messenger. So the Prophet is saying, now remember, revelation was not sent to me and you, but it was sent for me and you. Right? The Quran is for us to follow. But it ain't sent to you. It's sent to the Prophet so he can live it out and show you how to live it. Right? Now here's what he's saying. If you, first of all, bombs, bullets, arrows are dangerous, but the greatest bomb you can throw on people is psychological bombs. Psychological warfare. Talking about them, just talking, trash, is more harmful to them, right, than bullets. Okay, and if you do this, here it says Jibril, the Holy Spirit, will not cease to help you so long as you meet opposition for the sake of Allah and his messenger. So if you're doing it because if you see wrong, stop it with your hand. If you can't stop it with your hand, military power, speak out against it. And if you can't speak out against it, at least feel bad about it. But that's the weak kind of faith. Here we have the second one. We can speak out about it, but it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you big. Okay. But if you do that for the sake of Allah, the angel is going to, let's not angels floating around, but there's energy in the air going to help you. There's energy in the environment going to help you. It's going to help you. This is what this is what Allah said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She said, I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Hassan, satirize them and it will cure Muslims and also cure himself. Satirize those guys. Make fun of them. Make fun of boss man. Boss man bites the dust. Make fun of them. Eventually, guess what? That's going to cure the cowardice and the Muslims. Yeah, because here we are. What the hell do we have to do? Absolutely nothing. Sit back and run our mouth. Why? And still be here. We don't even have to be here anymore. We could leave tomorrow and we've already done that job. Ain't nobody whoop boss man like we have. And with a good attitude too. Nobody has done this. All the people that was attacked by the system, they took them out in elementary, in their elementary state. Martin Luther King, 13 years. Malcolm X, 13 years. And really just a few years at the end when they were really popular. And the time was pressing. They said, well, we don't have time to... Uh, psychologically damaged these guys, although they tried to. They tried psychological warfare with Malcolm. They tried it with King. They listened to all him having sex with women and played it to him and told him, you got to commit suicide. Um, we're going to play that in public. Good thing he didn't do it. That's what J. Edgar Hoover said to him. Now, Of course, we uh, the goal here, and this is from Sahih Muslim, satirize them and it will cure the Muslims. What has been our goal all the time? What is all of this about? To help the Muslims take their proper position in helping to aid and rescue America and the rest of humanity from this diabolical plan of shaitan 
that's working very well but is crumbling right in front of our eyes. And they can play a part in it. And it'll cure them. Another thing is, we do this right, it'll cure us too. Yeah. Okay, I'm not bragging. I, I've taken the cure, you know, like they say, I took the, the stuff and I, I didn't drink it. I didn't drink it. For, it's worked. Jihad and nafs, the jihad to conquer the self, have worked 1,000%. And those things related to Islam have came out exactly, exactly because we kept as our weapon in our arsenal, what? Kindness, optimism, and humor. Look at it, kindness, optimism, and humor. And it says that's our arsenal. That's the weapons we keep. And all the time, they've been trying to change our arsenal. Look right here. Terrell Reams, right? Da, 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 da. This is about my grandson. Whether he's alive or dead, they're trying to present him as dead to make me despondent, to make me mad, or to make me turn around. They're trying to affect me. This is my other son. They say he's sh stabbed three times with an army knife and shot six or seven times. There he is right there. Whatever he is, he's in the hospital and he got bullet holes in him. Whether they arranged where the bullet holes would be, whatever, he still got them in him. Right? He still got bullet holes in him. And what is this supposed to do? Maybe it's supposed to scare me to death. Maybe it's supposed to get me to say, oh, my poor son, the poor guy is laying there and the government is going to finish him off. Well, they're not going to finish him off. And they ain't going to finish me off either. Why? Because they can't. They've been boxed in. All this stuff proves it. They want to make you mad. It ain't no people. Do you see this ropes up on top of my head? They done knock. They used to have a saying, nigga, I'll whoop your head till it ropes like oatmeal. That's what they meant, rope. That's rope. That's ridges from being beaten. That is serious. Okay. There's a purpose for that. You know, there's a purpose for that. But it, it didn't work. It didn't work. And they had people here at the masjid. Man, I wouldn't take that. I would do this and I would do that. I said, I don't care what you would do. They'd stay here a while and they would leave. And their new cars they had. The government didn't see them. They didn't picked up a case somewhere and they drop them by here to get them to do, to say what they want. And then they want to make it a little even more personal. Revolution from Egypt to the Americas. I know that I've, you've seen this before, but remember, dear people, we said we're going to do four, five, six, no more than seven varieties of talks over the next several years because we're going to stay focused on what we're dealing with. And that's why we're doing this. Oakland and the American Islamic Revolution. Imam Jamil al -Amin in prison for the rest of his life. Imam Luqman, right, assassinated by the FBI. And Abdul Alim Musa, still alive and healthy and causing big trouble for boss man. Sanctions don't make no difference. Sabotage don't make no difference. Why? Because humor makes boss man. And this is not old stuff. This is just last year. Now, don't worry about it. Ramadan takes the belly down a little bit, but it's kind of... And I got my clothes hanging off of me. I was in there taking an enema. And here's the tattletale. 
you know the people that call on the phone all the time? These are the tell. Can you imagine? Why would they be calling me all the time? Right? To, for something? But is it harassment? They would think it's, har it's not harassment to me. It's hilarious. Anytime I want to joke, I'll answer the phone. Hey, what's going on? What y'all doing? Is this stuff new to me? Absolutely not. Demonstration and rally. Stand for justice. Stand for truth. Right? Stand against state terrorism. Right? Stand against all of these things. Uh, villainization of Muslims and Islam. Anti-terrorism bill. Secret evidence. Right? Criminalization of humanitarian deeds by Muslims. So that they, you can't do good deeds or they'll call it terrorism. This is back in the 90s. So it's not a surprise to us. Right? None of this is a surprise to us. As we mentioned last week in some of our, when we started our masjid, this, in 1980, this thing about wandering in the wilderness. Wandering in the wilderness was not struggling around, bumping into this thing. Wandering in the wilderness was like, in 1977, I was paying very close attention to Imam Warthadine Muhammad, like 76. Seven, well, all way back, all since, since he was Supreme Minister and then the Chief Minister and then the Mujaddid and all of that. What period I called wandering in the wilderness was being very staunch and listening to him and what he's saying. But I came to a conclusion. I'm sorry, I'm just telling you. The people that I, were, I was meeting, I was farther ahead than they was. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm, I'm listening to the chief and he's not dealing with he's not dealing properly with the stuff the COINTEL program, all this he's a good man but he's not I'm using my own criteria when I'm dealing with other imams I, I help them more than anybody else but I didn't give them bail I didn't give them bail because the level they was on. The newspaper and everybody else was saying these guys are the, the top of the line. And I'm coming out of a different, I always mention it, I say, well, they went to school. And in other words, the gangster world is different. If you live in a, a Scarface life, a godfather life, except a kind godfather, right? That's different than uh, everybody. You're going you gonna to pick up and go, zoop. And if you mix it with Islam, you're gone. And if the government, when you're in that period of transition or before, you might be where the government can't scare you, but if you got a house full of dope and the government is playing like the outside and you are dirty, as we used to say, you got to figure out how to, what am I going to do with all this? What I, you got to think like that. But once you clean, like I'm clean now, the government can't do nothing. Why? I'm clean. This is a thought pattern that I do. I do not have drugs. I don't have anything illegal on me or around me. I'm clean. So you can't do nothing. That's different. You can't do nothing to me. You could try to scare me, but you can't do nothing because I'm clean. I'm clean, homeboy. That's it. That's a way of thinking. That's an attitude. That's a mentality. When we talk about teaching and training and evolving people, that's what we will be teaching and training people. And anybody that's watching these, they should watch them over and over and over again and get this game. When I say get the game, learn the method of dealing 
with an authority that has everything in his hand. Remember, when they come up with a plan, they got the people, they got the money, they got everything. They can institute that. And they will. And sanctions, you have to be like Iran. You can stand sanctions. You have to be like Venezuela. They can stand the sanction, although it hurts bad. You have to be like us. This stuff don't hurt no more, but it was a time, long time ago, when we just getting started. This stuff had you going in circles, but you jihad and us. You fight and you learn. Who you fight with? Your own self, <laughs> right? That's what jihad and nafs is about. Right. It's, it's a personal jihad. The jihad, the, what attitude do I have to have to deal with these things in life? Right. What position, how do I have to view things? How should I look at things, right? And if I look at things as anything you do to me, I'm going to change it to a benefit. Anything you do, I don't care what it is, unless it's goodbye brother. Other than that, you get busy. An attitude, don't threaten me about nothing. Just get busy. Don't call me telling me what you're going to do. Just do it. Then you're on the road then. You're on the road. Because that's a big deal. You don't get there in no one day. People are basically afraid of governments and governmental system because they hold the key to their the balance of their whole life. People don't run their own lives. So they, they, you know, okay. Visible tactics, visible resistance. Make injustice visible. That's what we do here. All this little stuff they do is visible. Imagine when it was happening just to me. Got to remember, I have to wait for years to develop a policy to make them bring this stuff on the surface. And I have to wait till they do it over and over again. So that when I say they do this, they do this, everybody has seen it over and over and over again, right? That may, that's what jihad and nafs is. Because remember, how we fight this guy has to be different than the old struggles. The old way, the old methods is not going to, we have to be new. Because that's what we mean by star tracking. You know what I mean? We have to evolve to a level that's beyond him, you know, and we are. We are beyond them. They don't even know what we're talking about. The government don't know. And the, the, the Negroes that's informing them and helping them, they understand the language and they, the, but they don't understand how it all fits. This how is this guy? So they said, boss man, don't pay no attention to that stuff. They tell about boss man, you, that, that man's out there, just he just talking, he ain't nothing happening. That's the information they get. But boss man is staying up at night for some reason. He's got to be staying up at night. Why? Because how is it that all the Muslims are on his team? How is it that all of them are quiet? How is it that not one thing that's happening to me is happening to any of them? How is that possible? How is it possible? They're Muslim. There's anti-hatred for, there's Muslim hatred going on, right? Islamophobia. Well, why ain't nobody scared of y'all? Why y'all can stroll around? You don't have nobody doing nothing to you. How is that possible, right? But that's proof. That's confirmation. See, all of that, I would, if I was a braggart, I would say, this is superior game. You know, in, in, in the game, in the game, the life that we used to live, if I wanted to move from uh, or stay in marijuana, do it, 
I had one of my friends that was a big pimp. And uh, we had grew up together in East Oakland. Now he was out on the other side of town. He was big. And I said, I said, hey, man, what's the game on this cocaine? So uh, he could give me what he knew. He, was, he knew enough. So getting the game meant what is the measurements? What is the price? What is the, uh, the sales price? Uh, all of that. I, I want the game on it. That's what, when I use the word game, it means the whole scheme, the whole process. And we've gotten the game on Boss Man. We're actually tired of dragging him into one trap after another and making fun of him. It's actually getting boring. It's getting boring, the boss man. And he can't do nothing about it. You got to remember, you have to taste where you are. He got all my family working with him. He's already told them, that we just want you to do this, that, and another. And we're talking cold talk all the time. The hell out of my family, what are you talking about? And they're supposed to work for him and get whatever they can. Why not? What? I ain't going to help you, boss man. That's my uncle. Huh? Shoot. That's ridiculous. What do you want, boss man? But remember how safe that is. They can't do nothing to you because they didn't already made promises. And if you were to do something real physical, you know what I mean, like get rid of somebody, then what psycho stuff would happen in their brain? If my nephew is going through changes with alcohol, for me being his hero when he was younger and him doing what he's doing, what about the whole family? Right? And boss man is trapped. Boss man is trapped. Boss man, you are a classical dummy. You need help. Boss, yes, you need help. You need help. You need to surrender as soon as you can at the nearest, like the white man said, uh, uh, I'm going to declare war on poverty. That was Lyndon Johnson. Another white man said, well, can you show me where to surrender at? If he's going to declare war. So, boss man, no, 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 I'm telling you. So this is a counteroffensive all the time. This is a continuous counteroffensive. There's no effect that, uh, like, for instance, if the cars wouldn't start it, I was already, I said, was sleep on the bridge. I was already ready, like I was doing a little bit, to walk where I need to go for a while. I just walk, I just catch the subway. Just walk. Yeah, and I do what I want to do. I did it before. Right, I did it before. But boss man don't want you to walk and catch the subway because then he got to change his whole uh, following scheme because he got to follow you everywhere you go all the time. So it's easier if he either put something in the body in the car with you and they will take care of it, then everybody could go take a rest, uh, you know, because there's somebody that they put a report, or uh, they can put a following. T Imagine they got somebody on you 24 hours a day. I'm telling you, where I go do my little run, I jump down, and it, I guess it looked like I was falling down. Zip car pulls up. Uh, uh, if I, this hill right there, if I walk up the hill or sometime I'd run up in the summer and it's real hot when I used to wear sweat clothes. If I get part of the way up, you know, you lean on your knees. <laughs> yeah, can I help you? It's a detective, man and woman. You can tell they're detectives. Yeah, yeah, right, right, that hill right there, right there. Or if something happened, you get in a, uh, when I was out in Halalco once and I had a run in with one of the guys out there, 
they called the police, the police come, arrested me and put me in jail. But right up next to me is another police, a detective. Oh, I'm just here to da, 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 da. Why, that mean he's been there all the time and they or they didn't call him. Get on the spot. When I had to run in with all the police twenty something years ago, something like that, out there on the highway, right out there. Uh, when they was beating this guy on the highway, I don't know if he, he was beating him out, so I got out. Zoop. Another police come up and he put his medallion out like this. He got jerry curls, you know what they were in California. And he's sitting right there to make sure. And they, they know, so they know he's there for some reason now. He's in He's actually in control of that. Okay, take him to jail and call it a day. And that's it. But don't, uh, yeah, don't do no PG County stuff. Yeah, that stuff happens all the time. So this is a type, it develops a type of uh, toughness. But endurance, endurance, all the things we deal with deal with a long period of time. That's the first analysis. And you could read it in all the stuff we read the other day. That all we're doing is making a big analysis. Everybody then turned around. Everybody then quit. Everybody, and I ain't gonna let nobody turn us around, no drug, no woman, no nothing. Right, that's what it's all, it's all wrote there. It's because we didn't analyze everything in our environment. And that last analysis was needed. You can't find nobody that's going to consciously put themselves in prison. Consciously. Remember I'm talking about those little things flying around helping niggas. When you write and you got stuff that da 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 da, da just a little floating, they're gonna help you nail it down. Those forces exist. You can call them angels, it don't make no difference. They help put things in perspective or they urge things that are already inside of you to bring them out in a self-assisted Purposeful activity, that's what it is. That's a good name. That sounds nice, self-assisted, purposeful activity. <laughs> Ability to allow the whole government to attack you, and you know it. That's all big, that's a big deal. That ain't no childish stuff. I'm not going to go over it because as this stuff gets a little sticky and I'm going to keep on moving. Total resistance. That means you become a model of resistance. you got to remember, what do the people need in America and in the world? They need a model of resistance. How do, what does it look like? Right? What does it look like? Can you find it with Al Sharpton? No. What about Jesse? No. Uh, what about Mellow Yellow Nim? What about Imam Siraj Nim? Will you find it? What about Hamza Yusuf Nim? Can you find it with them? Mm. No. That's, they're not models of resistance. Where they show you specifically in detail over and over again, right? Just like we're doing now, over and over, redundancy over and over again, because this is what you need to deal with boss man over and over and over again. Total resistance, a model of resistance. Another thing, make the world proud of us. Okay, so right now, People pretending like, you know, all the people that you see or be around, they pretend like, I don't know nothing about myself. I don't know nothing about myself. I, never, I don't know. 
right? They're pretending that they don't know what everybody knows, that there's something going on, right? But I don't know. I never heard of it. I don't, I don't, I don't get it, right? Okay. So not only them, but the other people who are crying out for a methodology or it's in them, but they don't know how to, you know, everybody don't just pop up and start functioning properly, you know what I mean? Sometimes they need someone to point the way. Technically, we've already done that. We could leave here tomorrow or tonight or in a minute or two, and we have done a great job on being a model, on being an example. But I do have the feeling that we're going to go further and longer. And I actually, technically, I always say get to 100 years and then retire. And, and actually, to me, I actually mean it. I actually mean it. No, I plan, of course, Allah got a, his own plan, but I, I have planned, okay, I'm not only going to work out this much because I used to work out too much, right? You know, when you're young and you just, you could get, have good health. You could run four miles a doggone day and have perfect health, right? So you run eight, all them big miles and marathons and all that stuff. You, you can, you, I got lucky I didn't wear my knees out. I didn't wear nothing out. But a lot of people wear themselves out by doing those, you know what I mean? So now I'm trying to say, well, I'm going to save, uh, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to, Allah's in charge. Don't make no difference. What do we do? Allah's in charge. Anyway, make the world proud of us. The whole world is in on what we're doing here. Uh, three weeks ago, about ago, here come a, an Iranian I know from Iran, all the way from her. What the hell are you doing coming all the way from Iran to convince me about something? What? To convince me that this is uh, all the questions relate to trying to change our mind about our analysis. Oh, we said, no, that it, that it. They're they going to run around the block three, four times. And then they're going to shut it down. That's it. Don't you feel that there's a great move inside of the people? And one of the guys is saying, I saw in the eyes of those young people a new spirit. I said, shit, I didn't see it. I said, I ain't seen that. I said, I was sitting right there with them. I don't see that. I, what I do see is boss man ringing the bell and everybody going out for recess and running around, you know, and then they're going to do what boss man tell them. And then we come back when we go over to the, we had three or four, everything we did out there proved what we were saying. The first time we came out with the microphone, we was running and it was talking about California was stolen from and the Mexican, uh, whatever he was, come out. California wasn't part of Mexico. You remember that? I remember, yeah. So I didn't even say nothing because, of course, he got back on his bicycle and went on because he said, I think I kind of messed up. You know, because there's nobody in the thing that didn't know that California, San Jose, San Francisco, Los Angeles, city they right, everything with a... <laughs> so anyway, what about when we went over to, to the... Was we at the Capitol out there when the lawnmower come by, making all that noise, right? Here come the police, assalamu alaikum, why the hell are you here? What is the purpose? Well, the first day we out there, the police come by, right, cut us off. In other words, the focus is not on the dem it's, it's on us. It's on us. It's on us. That's the way it is. It ain't, we're not making this up. This stuff is actually, that's what is, that's what is happening. Okay, so one of the things about Sabakun, 
is something, sometimes it's already happened. The first stage, this has already happened. Those who lead the way, those who show the way. Right now, I say this all the time, we're in the part of those who show the way. We're showing the way right now. This is what it is. Okay, now, if and when Allah wants to evolve this, it'll get into the public environment where everybody will be aware and then we'll lead the way. Right? Or some of the people who didn't picked up on it. Because by that time, it won't be just an in-house thing. It'll be them spread around a little bit. So at that time, it will be not those who show the way, but those who lead the way. They're both applicable to our sabakun. Okay. Uh, focus, direction, goal, orientation. Okay. Self-image, self-esteem. All those things that, I, I, look, this stuff is so old. This stuff is in all the stuff we've been reading <laughs> for all that time. You can probably remember here over and over again. Goal orientation. Have a place to go. Definiteness of purpose. But self-image. Do you see yourself doing that? How do you see yourself? If you don't see yourself doing it, you're not going to do it. Because you can't do it. I can't do that. Or the right attitude. Attitude is a position. What is your position? What is your expectation? Do you expect to win? Yes. Well, you're going to win. I expect it. When you expect stuff to happen, that's when stuff going to creep out of the woodwork on you. That's when everything happens. You can't watch a movie. You can't listen to a radio program. You can't do nothing after a while without that help point the way. In other words, they're looking for you. Where is their support? Your support and confirmation is everywhere. You listen to the news, it supports what you've been saying, and it confirms it, right? Everything. If you're walking down the street, somebody said da 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 da, that confirms what you have been saying, what you've been doing. It's a confirmation. After a while, everything you Everything you do or everything that's done, everything in the environment begins to support and confirm the things that you're dealing with. And the other things you don't pay, it's like useless knowledge. It's like them quiz shows. That's useless knowledge. On You know a quiz show. It's knowledge. If you know it, it won't help you do nothing. If you don't know it, it won't harm you. You know what I mean? Right. That's useless knowledge. If you know it, it won't help you. And if you don't know it, it won't hurt you. That's the good that Imam Ghazali talks about, useless knowledge. I think that, is, that might be a personal uh, idea. But if you know it, it ain't going to help you. It don't help you. It's trivia. Right? And if you don't know it, it ain't going to hurt you. It's not going to prevent you from doing anything. Useless knowledge. Okay. Self-esteem. How you weigh and measure yourself. This is what we're teaching. So we've done, we've done most of, we've done most of this. As, as, it's been sometimes alone, sometimes with a few but those times are coming to an end. That's why I said the first, right now, we're still in those who show the way. But very soon it'll come those who lead the way. And this stuff about uh, convincing uh, well-to-do or educated uh, Muslims and their children uh, right now, they're watching that garbage on TV. And 90% of them believe it. 
they like it, they want to be Americans. But we want to show them how to help America, not follow them, lead them. But they got to have confidence in us that we know what we're talking about. That's why we might hit, have to hit point after point. You think just for being right 50 years, you may have to be right 70 years. You may be just getting ready to die and the people wake up. You know what I mean? And say, that's right, that's right. Look, he just said it 99 times. And one, two, three, eight, you know what I mean? Oh, 50 times correct? No, shoot, that ain't nothing. Just because everybody else is right every now and then, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's just not only being right, but being good and right. Now, that they don't believe. Because they don't believe why, I can hear them now, why we never made a such thing as a good nigga, so it can't be. If we didn't make him, how the hell is it going to be a good nigga? We never made a good nigga. That's what they think. Why? Because we've got to remember now, everybody's happy to get on their bandwagon, whether it's Barack Obama and them, and they, they get to sell their books, they get to be... You know, they get to act like somebody's important. And if they're president, 5% of what they do, like part of what Barack Obama did was good. The JPO, whatever they see. And then uh, Netanyahu hated it, so you know it was good. If you kind of know the Saudis hated it, they was mad. So, okay, that was good. So, he got a chance to do something. I didn't expect he was going to do that. I just thought he was going to get us all killed. Well, he did best he could. <laughs> but anyway, toughness, willpower. Uh, I don't mean these words outside of uh, Allah's support. You know, so I'm not talking about niggas got to be tough. Da, 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 da. No, 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 no. You, I'm, I'm mentioning these with a lie in mind. Willpower, when you ask Allah to give you the internal power to overcome whatever challenge, whatever obstacle, and also not only overcome it, but to use it as a benefit. Endurance, enduro, to last a long time. You hear it a thousand times, but it's true. Protracted struggle. That means it's over a long period of time. In order to do that, you have to have endurance. Permanence. And then take advantage of our natural gifts. Okay, I think Let's see. I'm just going to move toward a close. Sanctions. We've been sanctioned and sabotaged from day one. Just like Iran is sanctioned over there, imagine we're sanctioned here, inside. Imagine the trouble they can cause over there. You have to try to imagine how you can adjust your mind, your body, and the spirit that you could take anything they can throw out inside of America. Include being in your own head. You have to plan like boss man. If he crack you upside your head to send you to the hospital, he might be counting how many hits does it take. They might have had a meeting. How many hits with a certain type of thing? Because after a while, boom, they stop. They're looking, okay, that'll do it. So it'll cause so much damage, won't kill him, get him to the hospital, Right? Get them to do whatever, put whatever they want in. We assume that that's possible. So we have to have a plan for that. So what's our plan right away? Anything that comes up in our mind that's against our standards of morals and ethics is a sign that something is wrong. If it's against any ethic that we've held all along, uh, any moral point. We know something's wrong. So boss man have to be careful. He can't tell me, he can't push no button 
You know what I mean? And okay, I'm going to go do this, that, and other. Uh-uh. Survival counterfeit, family call, I've already talked about that. Trap of psychological warfare. We are prepared for our war. Uh, and look at us. <laughs> and look at them. That is something. Yeah, look at us. Hey, people may not like it, but they don't. People may not, they just don't know how much fun it is. See, and if you're fun loving, Allah may make the struggle to fit just what you like if you act right. You know what I mean? I believe this was, uh, I'm not going to say I believe it. I almost know it's what's happened. Because, but you don't get it the first couple of days. You have to work over a long period of time. Then everything's fall into place. How you see things, how you visualize. It falls into place, I mean, big time. So look at them. They have to follow orders from a, a people that's got so much plastic in the ocean. They had... They was talking yesterday morning about microplastic. Plastic and the little hair, little hair, just a little smaller than a hair. Good God Almighty. And the fish is eating all that stuff. And they have fish with big things of plastic. And they're dying of starvation because they think that what they're eating is food and is plastic. And the people follow them dummies. They don't say, stop everybody. The world is off balance. Let's stop. Now we're going to do this, do that. Let's figure out how to do it. They don't do that. These people you voting for, are they voting for? They ain't saying, we got to fix this stuff now, not next month. Next year, we putting a freeze on all of this. That's what it takes. They don't have, they don't have the vision. They don't have the ability and the smoke going to be up in their house and all under their car before they even think about it. Then if it's up to them, the earth will boil over. And they'll be there heating it up all the time. Well, there's one more dollar out there somewhere, I know. They'd be hunting for the last dollar. Like when they get rid of the last animals, the last why not white rhinoceros, and they still, why not stop when there's 20 or 50 of them left or something? No, we just keep taking their horns to, oh, wait a minute, now there's only one left and she's so old she won't be able to have a, maybe we'll mix one with this, that, do something. This is, people is dumb. Why don't they, they won't stop it, that's what I'm saying. They're not stopping. They got the poor little Greta, whatever name it is, some sweet and running around. That girl is already heart sick. You could see it. You guys are not, you know, well, she's young. That's why she got to realize it's gonna be, you're going to be gray-headed by the time these people get, uh, if they ever hear you, you're going to be, you're going to be grown. You ain't going to be no little frizzly headed teenager. Shoot, <laughs> not messing with these people. <laughs> okay, hand-picked Negroes, hand-picked family. Uh, hand-picked Negroes. Yeah, good. Hand-picked family. That's good, too. Them self-imposed isolation in the midst of thousands. Self-imposed isolation. They think we're practicing self-imposed isolation. But they're isolated in the midst of thousands of people. They're isolated. Their policies is ignorant bad policies. So, they're isolated. Now, last, uh, we saying if they gave us 30 years, we could fix it. But they didn't have 150 years after slavery and they ain't fixed nothing yet, so they're not up to fixing nothing. They didn't have all that time. So, if you want it fixed, give us, a, give us 30 years. They don't fix it in 150 years, just give us 30 years. Free and clear. Uh, 
Okay, I think that might be just about it. Excuse me a second here. Da -da -da -da. What did I do? This is about Bayer. We'll talk about um, all the people that we've been around. Iranians, Shias, all those groups, all the Sunni groups, you know, and uh, like the brother sent a, a message the other day, one of the old time brothers. Well, if, if y'all get it, uh, try to watch and study what do, what, what would I need to do what I need to do. You don't have to come visit or nothing. Just figure out what I would need if you, you know, if you picking up on it, yeah. Do like we do. We study, well, what does it need to fix that? So, are there any questions or any comments? But I'm just saying, I don't want y'all running down there and vote because some people make you feel good, make you sad. Uh, in closing, remember I was talking about uh, Tahir Square and Muhammad al -Asi and Masood Chajiri from the Islamic, uh, what do they call it? Not civil rights, but uh, Human Rights Commission in London. They was calling me from Tahir Square to say that this is a real, Tahir Square in Egypt when they was having the, and I'm telling them, it won't be no Arab Spring. Just like the brothers came over here from Iran. Yes. Yeah, you just come here from Iran just a couple of weeks ago to convince me about what they're doing here. Don't I see what they're... And when I tell him that ain't what's happening, he almost closed up his book and didn't want to hear anymore. I said, you got to have courage. You got to have the courage and the discipline you know, to tell the people what's going on. Don't tell them what you want to hear. In other words, they have, they have a line they're trying to produce in Iran. It's a modest line and it's, uh, uh, it's the bootlickers line. See, the bootlickers are on the defensive right now. Oh, and they just, and then the principalists, they think I'm a principalist. My homeboys, they think they on the ascendancy because they told them, don't do this, don't do that, them people just lie. And they did, that's what they said they was gonna do. So now, now if I made a mistake, I just go and say, well, dear believers, I think the brother blew it on that. So that's the way that is. Uh, in fact, a uh, homeboy was saying the right thing, why don't y'all get with him for a while and I'll just tag along. That's what I would do because if you're thinking about the whole, if, it's, if you had an idea and you pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, and some other guy had another idea and he's pushing that and you overpower him, but he comes out right, then you say, well, any grown man would say, Hey, look like your stuff came out right, so uh, I just take second or thirds. I cruise along with you, keep an eye on things, I'll, you know, and, and keep my ears open and eyes open, right? That's what a human. If you're for everybody else, if you're for the whole show, but if you're for yourself and your team, you just said that didn't happen, and you keep hoping that you can take. That's like white folks. We're going to take all the machinery. So they're going to take press TV. They're going to take all of their media and try to shape a picture that's not real. And that's why they be asking me them dumb questions. No, that ain't what's happening. Nope. And that's why I do something different all the time. Whatever they say, I do something different. I say, I don't care what you do. I do something different because different is not what they want. And... It can't be wrong. It may not be exactly right, but it can't be wrong. Usually it will be. Anyway, I mean right, that is. Okay, so 
they always, why would they send me to Zurich, Switzerland? Was that Zurich? I think it was Zurich. Why would they send me to Switzerland to make a talk at the Islamic Human Rights Commission? And there's no program there. That's Zafar and them and the Human Rights Commission. And why would they all be going for it? Why nobody amongst them, our friends, why nobody say Imam Musa is our homeboy? Maybe they was just long as Dr. Siddiqui was around and everything was going that way. They say that's fine. The minute he left, the minute I'd go back to South Africa, uh, they'd have me out in the woods somewhere. They'd have Muhammad al right downtown every time, right in the big center masjid, all the time. Like he's correct, and he didn't. Uh, Dr. Siddiqui said he is great in Quran, but he didn't say this guy here been around and he know what's going on. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. Okay, so why would they put the one out in the woods? This <laughs> okay, so I'll talk about the people that are supposed to get Veya, they're supposed to be on our team. That comes under the heading of sanctions and sabotage. We have been fully sanctioned and fully sabotaged, and it ain't nothing. So, are there any questions or any comments? No, I mean, most of this is about the giving of the bomb. I wanted to say I totally agree with you. Um, and, uh, well, I, I had a question. Um, you talked about a little bit earlier today about, like, um, you know, you've got friends, family, your peers. Right. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, the, first of all, the internal struggle is a, just a wonderful struggle. They call it, uh, there's a different name, Zuhud. Have you ever heard of Zuhud? Uh, yes. Zuhud. Yeah, yeah. Zuhud is, is when you just withdraw from, or the th you're not attached to things. The internal struggle is just like the Quran and Hadith and all that. That's studying that, but that's internalizing the Quran, internalizing the Hadith, and not the ones that you just like, but internalizing the ones that really challenge you. You know, now, when you internalize those Hadith, and those Quranic ayats that mean you really move away from being attached and being attracted to the dunya. You got to remember the dunya, all the hadith say, man, that people looked over and, and held fire and said, oh, ain't nobody going to want to go there. You know, ain't nobody. Because look at the hellfire. Then they show you what's surrounding it. Right? So I don't think anybody going to make it because they got all the things that are attractive. Uh, the women, the horses, the, the, the uh, approval of people. You know, those are things that motivate people. So you have to be fortunate enough sometimes. Okay, with me, I was fortunate enough to have all of that at an early age. Like I say, I left the country when I was 25 or 26. I had went through, I had got the game basically on life then. 
I mean, you know the major stuff. So I realized what things was. So when we always talk about uh, the comfort, you know what I mean, of contentment and all of that stuff, that's real. I, I know it's real. I'm not guessing it's real because I know, I mean, I, I, I know what life looked like like before, if everybody looking like, oh man, that's terrible, but it's heavenly. What they look like, what they saw before, the big pretty cars, all them cutie pies, they said, man, that's what's it. And I'm telling them, I don't know, this is it. This is the point that I had an opportunity to live those things and get all of it in spades. Maybe I was the wealthiest guy in the region. That's enough. I don't have to be the wealthiest man in the world to understand what wealth do. It's a process. It does this, it does that, da, 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 da. Okay. So when it mentions those things, I realize that uh, in psychology they have internals and they have externals. I don't know if you've yeah, read it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, you know, externals are everybody that, oh, I got a bad grade. That's because they did this over there. That they were breaking up the street that I couldn't hear. And, right, it's all the external stuff. Internals are internally motivated and guided. You know, they got good on their tests because they was internally focused and motivated. Okay, so the two points, internal Quran and Hadith and getting all those basics together. External is learning how to uh, accept and adjust all the people feeding stuff to you, right? It's learning how to adjust to it and how to use what Remember, this is useful. I don't need that. You don't forget it, but it, it, this is useful. I need that. I like this. I like that. And take it. It's like tasting food. Oh, I like this. Mm, I, don't, I don't like that. You know. you know, you're just tasting it all of it. And then, what is their purpose for uh, feeding me or trying to, uh, I mean, the information I get is basically the wrong information. Everybody is feeding me the wrong information. Well, then why am I making the right decisions? That's okay. That's the question. Okay, this is the answer. Everybody is feeding me the wrong information, but I have a criterion. The criterion, al Khan, is the Quran, is the Hadith, is the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's our standards. Quran, Sunnah, history. History is big. History is big. I mean, just to be a historian, ah, it ain't no, you can make big mistake, be a fool almost. But to be Quran, Sunnah, history and studying with those as the filters. And then our own experience is easy. That's why we don't make uh, big blunders. And that's why we, you can forecast the society because historically, this is what systems always do, right? Or 90% of the time, they do that. And the other 10% they don't do it is because of this. And you have a whole memory bank of all of that stuff. And so, uh, that's, that's how it's done. But jihad and nafs is the biggest, is to struggle against your own desires and your own self. I want this, I want that. Pretty soon, I don't want that. If it ain't right, I don't want it. I don't care what it is. I just don't want that. 
That's how they trapped our brothers up in other places. You know, I don't, uh, well, uh, you could take this, these computers, this, whatever those things are, and the police come and arrest you and kill you because can't nobody bring none here. I don't want them. N -n -n, buddy, I'm sorry. I don't want any extra. Whatever you got, you bring it, lay it on the table, I'll count it in front of everybody. That's it. That's it. Okay, but that's what Jihad and Naf says. All of our brothers that have fell into a trap, now I'm not bragging now, but it was something dealing with the, the little thing dealing with the Nafs. Remember, that's what Shaitan always used. He may use the Nafs of arrogance. I don't want nobody coming in my neighborhood using no dope. Well, number one, you got a way to slow it down, but you have to use the way God give you. You know, not the way the police know you don't like nobody. You So he gonna send every dope dealer you know, it's like the Wall Street movement. I don't know if you noticed that they, they had all the, the pedophiles and all of it there. They let them all out of jail and sent them down there. So suppose the police know I don't like uh, certain types of people. They'd be standing in line right there. So that's the answer that I would give. The internal answer is jihad and nafs. The external answer, Quran, Sunnah, history, and our own experience. What we, and you, you can't go wrong too much. Or you can't go far wrong. Any more questions or comments? Okay, alhamdulillah.